The Whips have agreed that item 19, the motion on aspirations on the supplementary agenda, will be taken next. Can I ask Councillor Govindia to move and Councillor Mrs Tracy to second the motion in their names? Thank you. There is an amendment to this motion that has been circulated. Can I ask Councillor Mrs. Uh, Leonie Cooper to move and Councillor Belton to second the amendment? I move the amendment. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to formally move the, uh, unless the other Councillor Cooper wants to. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, don't let me stand in your way, uh, Councillor Cooper. Um, would you like me to sit down? No, perhaps not. Um, I'd like to formally move the amendment, um, butting in quickly before the other Councillor Cooper. Only seconded. Thank you. The uh, speakers are now Councillor Mrs. Hampton. Aspiration right. sits at the heart of our Conservative beliefs. Just look at me. My parents had so little, but my excellent state education gave me the confidence to aspire to be the successful businesswoman that I am today. And just as a little aside, when I set that business up over 20 years ago, the practical help that I got from Wandsworth Council stays with me today. So it's as an entrepreneur that I am delighted about Apple coming to Nine Elms. But I want us to pause and also to praise the team that made this happen. Boris, whose legacy lives and breathes in London, our own Ravi Govindia, our officers and our business leaders. Years of hard work, vision and delivery these things don't happen overnight. This is a huge opportunity for us, and we are lucky enough to have Councillor Caddy, who is leading on business and apprentices. In a few short months, she has set up and hosted a business event in Wandsworth. 120 delegates. And this is what one of them said. I just wanted to say a big thank you. It was a great and helpful thing for the council to offer, really valuable for a start-up. I introduce her to a friend of mine who has just won a Queen's Award for industry. Maybe that IT company can help Wandsworth establish IT hubs because we are collectively using our positive energy pushing ideas and innovation. And what do the opposition do? They don't like our debate on aspiration, do you? They wanted to delete the world, word economic growth, delete low tax policies that lead to higher disposable incomes. Shame on you. This long-term Conservative administration will not waste our residents' hard-earned council tax. Better services at lower cost is our mantra. Look how we compare to the high tax, poor outcome of Merton, Labour Merton. I know, I lived there for two years. That is why we want more devolution more power for locally elected councils. Part of our role as councillors is to nurture and encourage corporate responsibility. As chairman of the Grants Committee, that aspiration has taken a fresh approach. Next week, we will host a group of funders to help homegrown charities in Wandsworth to to get more money for them and to make a difference to residents' lives. That group includes the Power Station Foundation, who, to my mind, are a shining example of how a, a for-profit organization 
can embrace and help the wider community. There are many examples in my own ward of St Mary Park where I have been able to introduce developers to local groups such as Keys House to help big business integrate and benefit the local community and to include generous donations. But this success takes focus and aspiration to make the most of these open opportunities. Wormsworth is open for business to make this an even better and greater place to live and work in. I urge you to support the motion and remember, Conservative Wandsworth is working for all its residents. I'll take Councillor Govindia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on, on 28th of September, uh, Patsy Power Station announced uh, that Apple UK had agreed to take half a million square feet of uh, office space in the Power Station building. Apple moving its head UK headquarters to Batsy Power Station with 1,400 of its current employees to Batsy, I thought was the most momentous piece of news for this borough since the Americans decided to shift their embassy to, to Nine Elms. We on this side thought that this was a rather upbeat news for which we ought to have a congratulatory and upbeat motion. I thought this was something that we ought to sort of take time to reflect and acknowledge that drive and ambition for Nine Elms has actually delivered what is perhaps the most successful regeneration area in the borough. I thought it was time to say please and thank you, because that's the way I was brought up, to, to those who had helped us to achieve that. And I thought this was time to talk up the opportunities that we'd striven so hard to bring and to say that this is the way we want to share them with the residents of our borough. And I thought, I thought that we ought to be grateful to those who bring hope and opportunity to our doorstep. And I thought that the idea that the power station of yesterday, now restored and rebooted to become a powerhouse of tomorrow, was something to lord and celebrate and congratulate and so on. And I thought nobody would be so miserable about such an upbeat piece of news. And of course I was wrong. Um, I'd say it obviously sticks in the throat of the party opposite to have a motion in which uh, we thank Boris Johnson for his support or the, the current and previous governments for their steadfast support. But you know, it is important that we acknowledge their contribution because without their contribution to the next incremental finance of way of fina financing the Northern Line extension, nothing very much would have happened. And it is because of that support that we have what we have. And because of that support, Apple has decided to come here. So maybe, perhaps, one ought to be reflective of reality and say, well, we acknowledge it even if it sticks in our throat. But not, not the part of the opposite. I do think that we do need to look at the Apple announcement and, and, and see what it probably brings further in, in the future. Half a million square feet is a lot more than 14,000 jobs. In reality, there will be twice as many and perhaps even more jobs. And just that is the kind of opportunity, that is the kind of ambition that is on our doorstep and we have to resolve to teach our young people to aspire to take those opportunities. I think we also need to join the dots with what is happening in, 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 in that part of the borough, with what is happening in the immediate around, area around it. The Royal College of Art, which is going to expand, has an opportunity to, to in fact become a focus of cooperation between two world-class institutions to create something new for the borough, perhaps a tech hub, perhaps a design hub, but certainly an opportunity, a possibility of providing untold opportunities for our residents and people in the, in the, in the, in the borough. Mr. Mayor, I sort of looked at um, the Labour Party's motion and I thought, you know, when we will be striving to make the most of what is on our doorstep, Think about what will they be doing, and I think the party opposite will be sitting there, as they always do, amending clause and subclause, as they always do, trying to delete facts from history books, because those his facts might offend their great leader. 
No, no, I, I want to home in on one bit of the amendment which asks me to uh, ask this council to cooperate with the mayor. Well, let me tell you, if it is not already known to the party opposite, that certainly through London councils I am cooperating with the mayor to do whatever is good and in the best interests of London. But unfortunately, as yet, on the housing front, the mayor has not crystallized what his wants are, what his ambitions are. He did write a manifesto, and he did get elected on that manifesto, but all the building blocks to delivering that manifesto have yet to come together. And if they do come together, of course I'm happy to cooperate with him. But let's reflect on this kind of 50,000 figure, which started as a promise, which is already aspirational. When the sort of affordable rent figure came out, it is already an aspirational figure, and there's a lot of wheezy words uttered by both the mayor and his deputy James Murray to try and get out of it, find as much sort of flexibility in, in the ways that they can fulfill that, that promise. But let nobody in, be in any doubt if the mayor comes with a cogent argument about how he will deliver the kind of promises he's made to Londoners, I will help him. When he fails, we will want to hold him to account. Let me just reflect on the promise we made to the residents about in North Battersea. 15% affordable housing on every site. We have delivered that. That is the promise that we have delivered it site by site. 15% affordable housing for sure. Could you and now getting up to, so now I'm just doing that. Thank you. Now getting up to nearly 30% in some of the later sites. And what more have they done? They have funded the Golden Goose of the Northern Light Line extension, which has delivered everything that, in fact, this area is now unlocking for the people of Battersea. Mr. Mayor, I think this is a, a motion that actually ought to commend approval from both sides. Thank you. Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Belton, could you kindly just turn your speaker I off? Think Thank you. Uh, move on to Councillor White. Um, I just want to point out this is his maiden speech, so welcome. Councillor White. and uh, fellow councillors for allowing me to make my maiden speech during this debate around aspiration. It's a topic I can well speak on and it is with regret I do so uh, without my inspiration and the man that made me the person that I am today as my father passed away 13 years ago. He would have been overjoyed and not a little bit surprised to see me as an elected Labour councillor. He was an active trade unionist and a Labour Party member in Merton and helped Siobhan McDonough finally get elected, but it only took her three attempts, not like the four it's taken me. <laughs> My parents were Irish immigrants to this country and were eager for their sons to do well and make our mark. A typical immigrant's aspirational attitude to the opportunities offered here, but maybe not available at home. I was brought up in social housing in Brixton and I have indeed been lucky enough to remain in social housing areas for all of my life. It provided the platform for me and now one of my sons who is in university in America, having been inspired by the mixed area he grew up in and it's this really affordable environment that is important to maintain and to continue to build with every opportunity we have, including the Nine Elms development of which we now speak. I notice in this motion we ask for the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, to do the right thing. Well, I can assure you, someone who's proud to call the London Mayor my good friend, inspiration, and now joined by Ben Johnson and Nick Bowes, my predecessors in Tooting Ward, he cannot fail but do the right thing. I am also daily inspired by my colleague, the newly elected Tooting MP, Dr. Rosanna Allen Khan, only one of our brilliant female team. And I cannot mention our female group without again remembering the wonderful councillor Sally Ann Epson, who I was lucky enough to call a friend and reminds us on both sides of this chamber as I look around that we must do more to find the men and women from our different communities to step forward to serve as these people have, I have mentioned did and give representation and inspiration to those from their backgrounds. So I know a little bit about aspiration. I also know about my patch, Tooting Ward, an area I'm proud to represent and I've grown to love since moving to the area 26 years ago. I find my time spent almost exclusively now in and around my ward. It is a very unique place with thriving new businesses and a succession of migrants living peacefully side by side with the indigenous. The new Shoreditch, apparently, 
But with that comes dangers which can destroy the very nature of the place that once attracted us. Diversity means tooting is not stultifying or limiting, but liberating and indeed inspires the aspirational. Right Nine Elms and the social housing that surrounds it, particular emphasis must be placed, I believe, on allowing people who now call it home, their sons and daughters, future generations of the aspiring of finance poor to stake their claim there. There are many challenges for Tooting Ward. Housing staff at St George's Hospital, ensure, ensuring new developments are harmonious with this wonderful area. A cleaner environment for sustainable green solutions, easing out the noxious, the dirty and the unsustainable. My younger son has asthma, so I know how important this is. I will also look for help to make Tooting safer, smarter and litter free and hope to work closely for the next two years with the majority group in this chamber as cooperation can bring big rewards. And I promise to be just as magnanimous with that group when they become the minority in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be wise and dispassionate in my time as a councillor and derive stimulus from advice given by a noted pre-Christian Irish chieftain, Conor McCart, to his son about the administration of power. Do not deride the old, though, they are, uh, though you are young, nor the poor, though you are wealthy, nor the rain, though you are swift, nor the blind, though you are given sight, nor the sick, though you are strong, nor the dull, though you are clever, nor the foolish, though you are wise. It's good to see the emphasis on empathy and a lack of arrogance were considered watchwords for good governance almost 2,000 years ago, and they continue to be. I will aspire to use these words to guide me in this chamber. But please, do tell me if I ever fall short. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Jane Cooper. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Um, could I congratulate Councillor White on a very inspirational maiden speech? Thank you. And we look forward to working with you. Last week at the Tory party conference, Sajid Javid, Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government, said that Harold Macmillan put it best more than 90 years ago by saying that housing is not a question of conservatism or socialism, he said it's a question of humanity. Tackling this housing shortfall isn't about political expediency, it's a moral duty, which is why here in Wandsworth we take it so seriously. But we need to remember that it's not simply houses we're building, it's homes. It's a place for people to grow, to raise a family, a place to peacefully live their lives. We're not just putting roofs over people's heads, we are creating communities. Look what we're doing on the Putney Valley State, working with the local residents association, a building has been identified that is being converted to accommodate people with learning disabilities, accommodation for those elderly people who wish to downsize, but who do not wish to live in the community where they have lived for over 50 years. A further benefit of this is that families on the estate living in overcrowded conditions will be able to move to the underused accommodation vacated by those people moving to the accommodation for the elderly. It's a win-win situation for our residents. Affordable housing should be the goal, but housing can only really be affordable with significantly more housing being developed to meet demand. And councils must play their part by developing more housing and being progressive in using their assets to deliver that housing through a creative use of assets and land. Too often a council's aspiration can be matched by resources to deliver that aspiration. Councils such as Southwark having, hand in, having handing back right to buy receipts that can't be spent to build local housing. We see regeneration plans such as Hackney's Woodbury Down stored for many years as funding gaps have opened and plans have needed to change and adapt. The world and acting and considered approach to use of assets got and placed Wandsworth at the forefront of council self-build and regeneration. 
Over £30 million invested in building, with over 250 council-hidden homes delivered. This council has, this is a council that has identified £170 million of potential development that could utilise, that would utilise £51 million of right to buy receipts, additional fund costs funded by other council resources. So many of the boroughs have had to hand back these right to buy receipts, but because of our prudent financial by Mrs. Murray and Mr. Boss, we've managed to uh, go forward and keep our right to buy and fund all these new buildings. In the pipeline, 230 homes at various stages of planning to be delivered over the next three to five years on council-owned sites, and a commitment to develop a minimum of 300 low-cost homes. And then officers are continuing to search for sites, and we as councillors must help them identify sites, the space that has, that has that development potential to meet local needs and meet demands. I can attest the process works. The Putney Vale Estate, which I mentioned earlier, being one such site, and now the RA and I have identified another site there that can be used for housing. But the council is going further. On a bedrock of one of the best regeneration residence office in the country, guaranteed local housing and compensation with the council owning and managing the stock, and a firm financial foundation built up over the years, the council has a financial clout and will to improve homes and neighbourhoods and to change lives. This means the ability to take forward two major estate regenerations on the York Road and Stanley and Alton Estates that will deliver over 3,000 new homes, including social rented and shared equity housing for our council residents. I'm so proud of the regeneration work we are doing on these estates. However, we must recognise as local representatives that it can be difficult to persuade some local residents of the benefit of the event on their doorstep, and we must be sensitive to this. Therefore, I would particularly like to thank the Labour councillors who represent these estates and have worked with the leader, the cabinet member and officers on behalf of their residents to get the best result, unlike other parts of London where residents have been let down by political squabbling. In partnership, we are working to make things better for our less well-off residents, helping them to reach their aspirations. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Mrs. Leonie Cooper. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think uh, that probably all members in this room are, uh, in the light of recent developments this week, very glad that it's Apple who've decided to move in uh, rather than Samsung, um, as uh, otherwise there might be uh, some problems uh, calling out the fire brigade to that area uh, somewhat more extensively than uh, we might have anticipated. Uh, and of course, uh, no doubt we'll be uh, looking forward to Apple paying uh, their fair share of tax as well. Um, along with a number of other companies, um, there have been some issues about Apple and tax. Now, look, I want to answer some of the points that um, Councillor Govindia was raising um, in his comments, uh, in his uh, surprising speech, which I, I wasn't expecting at that point, um, who seemed to be somewhat unhappy about what our amendment had done. And I'd just like to actually read the amended motion because I think you've actually completely misrepresented. Mr. Mayor, point of personal explanation we since saying. I was named. I wasn't disappointed, I was rather surprised at her miseryness. Oh, well, perhaps I've misunderstood you, but um, if I can just. Uh, I'm so misunderstood, so misunderstood. You're, you're so right, Councillor Thomas. This council aspires to ensure that every individual in the borough has the opportunity to get a good job, live in a decent home and achieve a positive quality of life. In pursuit of this goal, this council, and it then uh, goes on from there. Now, I think that's a pretty strong statement um, in terms of aspiration from this side. And I think it's a, a travesty to characterize our amendment as removing aspiration from this motion. But I think if we're going to talk about an aspiration for every individual in this borough um, in terms of jobs and homes and quality of life, let's be serious. We did need to amend this motion 
because otherwise it has an element of looking a tiny bit self-congratulatory and also rather backward looking. We need to be looking forward and we also need to admit that so far we have done very well in terms of jobs and homes for a certain slice of the population in this borough. We have not done very well in terms of making sure that we provide homes for people at all price points in the market. And that is both in the rented market as well as in the home ownership market. You know, we cannot continue this business of focusing just on homes. And in fact, the answer to question three is very revealing. It talks about 20,000 homes being built in the Nine Elms uh, Vauxhall Opportunity Area and thereby hangs a tail with the very name of the area and then talks about 57 affordable homes on the other side of the road. We do need more affordable homes. We need more affordable homes that people who can afford something less than a million pounds to purchase and people who need to rent at all different points in the market. And we also need to create them so that we don't have this continuous arrangement where one side of the road looks like one thing and then on the other side of the road it looks completely different. We need to become much more integrated. And in fact, the other councillor Cooper mentioned Woodbury Down. Woodbury Down is a fantastic example of how to integrate a neighbourhood. You can walk around the edge of the reservoir which has been opened up by um, Thames Water and the London Wildlife Trust working in conjunction with developers and the local council. You cannot tell which of the houses that have been purchased, which of those have been rented, where people have returned, uh, who used to live there before, where people have moved in new. It's a fantastic and completely integrated development for people of all points in uh, the social scale and also for, for nature as well. We should be aspiring to that. Instead, this time last year, uh, Councillor Ellis and I were both on the ones with radio and we were talking about the cost of property in this borough and he said that people who could not afford the kind of level that the market has now reached in this borough could move to Barking and Dagenham or Croydon. I do not call that an aspiration that I would want to endorse. I do not call that an aspiration for all of the people in this borough. Where are we providing anything for people who are the hairdressers and there's not a single person in this room who doesn't get their hair cut. Those people who, who are cleaners who are not on the same salaries as barristers and solicitors and don't tell me most people in this room also don't have a cleaner. The gardeners, the kind of people that I talk to on the doorstep who say, here I am living in this block of flats on the platform or Savona, I cannot possibly afford any of those flats that are being built on the other side of the road. We need to create communities, we need to meet the aspirations of everybody and it can't just be around um, jobs and homes just for a slim slice of people. We need to get that ready of accommodation and thank goodness we have a new Labour Mayor who's going to make that happen there and the rest of London. Thank you. Councillor Nardelli. Thank you Mr Mayor. Aspiration. Aspiration. To so many of us aspiration is following the path that our parents had laid out for us or our educational cohort or our own personal ambition. But what happened in areas like Queenstown, Latchmere, or even Roehampton is that those three drivers are missing. Missing, you could say, from the years of labour benefit, keeping people in existence and not in aspiration, keeping people locked into poverty with a benefit system that was not fit for purpose. But this speech is not about the evil mistakes that the Labour government made. It's about how this government and this council, this Conservative-led council, is handing back the tools the skills, the hopes and the aspirations to more than just one generation. We're about repairing the evil mistakes. In my own ward of Queenstown, community, council, landowners and developers have come together. Organisations such as Quest, Workmatch, Storm, Fast, Catherine Lowe Settlement, the Rose Community Centre and the developers have come together with the backing, funding and support of the council to actively get our residents off benefits and into work. Mm -hmm. And not just unskilled low wages work either, which was the time gone by as Queenstown represented. Queenstown Ward has historically been a major employer for Wandsworth. Today it is still the main private sector employer of the borough, challenged only by the public sector employers of this council and St George's Hospital. Between 2009 and 2012, employment grew by 9% in Nine Mills. 
That's 2,450 jobs. And that was despite the loss of some 2,000 jobs in mail and courier services. But these new jobs are in higher skilled sectors, not only replacing, but increasing the numbers. The area has proven to be successful economically at this time, with more waste <coughs> collecting treatments and disposal and other liners to show that this is the case. So what are these figures and what are this council's achievements? The work match, added to what we've already heard of the 567, work match has supported some 155 Queenstown work resi residents into work. And out of these, 52 are for Quest clients. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Quest, Quest was established two years ago solely for the Queenstown ward. Its success is now extended to the wider Battersea area. Quest works with 18 to 30 year olds who would benefit from a more intensive, bespoke sort support. The harder to reach, those with more complex needs, with poor attainment, poor behaviours that have found themselves in a hopeless or difficult situation. These are the real benefactors of aspiration. Quest works closely with Fast, with Storm and with Catherine Lowe and is based at the Rose Centre. So let's add to this the Nine Elms Joint Coordination Unit who have placed a further 137 ones with residents into construction jobs into Nine Elms, 26 into construction apprenticeships. And outside of Nine Elms, Work Match have placed another 18 residents into apprenticeships too. The council has employed agreements with the landowners who are required to work with Work Match to offer jobs to local residents essentially putting our local residents in the first place for jobs and opportunities. The Opportunity Area Planning Framework has suggested 25,000 new jobs in this area, which is now believed to far exceed that figure. This would double the number of jobs in the area, and it's hard to predict, predict the skill levels of the future new jobs, but 60% of these will be office-based, the remainder largely in re retail and hospitality. Although the skills will be of higher levels, to reflect the values of the employment space that this is now commanding. As employment grows, so will housing, as it becomes a true mixed-use central London neighbourhood. So what is the aspiration of the housing? The Council completed 251 hidden homes, of which 63 were in Queenstown, the largest scheme today of 38 on the Rollo Estate. The ability for the council to keep 100% of the designated RTB one-to-one -one receipts has meant that the council has over 50 million pounds to invest in new affordable housing, with a particular focus on developing low-cost rented housing. And with regards to the Patmore and Savona estates, the council has let contracts for the development of 57 low-cost rent homes across the council's land holdings on those estates for families and step-down yeah, homes. So can you conclude, please? The schemes have been targeted to local residents who need to move because they wish to downsize or they need larger family accommodation. Start on the site is imminent, happening any day now with the completion by summer 2018. So I'm okay. becoming a bit like the nasty party over there, isn't it? A little no, bit of think, a bit think, aggressive, uh, slightly aggressive. One could almost think it was UKIP over there, do you not think, with the aggression they're Thank showing you. us? It's very poor, very poor. Anyway, finally, this is my last point now. I can see my red lights on. Finally, we are building homes to buy and to rent for I working households. Time building on the Housing to Work project, which offers younger residents in need of housing a council tenancy, along with the assistance in seeking and gaining employment. Up, thank thank, thank you. you. Councillor Grimston, you wish to speak. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. From, um, and, uh, could I just start actually by congratulating the majority party on a number of uh, aspects here. Firstly, I, I think this is an excellent sort of debate that we should be having in full council. I think from time to time we do get a bit dragged down with the minutiae of what's already gone through the, the committee process. And to be raising our uh, minds towards a rather longer issue, uh, term issue than this, I think is very encouraging and I, and I entirely welcome it. And also, I, I think if we believe at all in local democracy, I think we really should recognise that uh, I certainly sat in a number of meetings 
which Councillor Govindia led with the uh, developers of the uh, Nine Elms uh, process there, talking about what the requirements were for the community in terms of jobs. Uh, and I think it is entirely right that, that we should recognise, if we think the local government can make any difference at all, that when there is a very, very considerable success of the nature that I think we are celebrating tonight, then it's entirely right that we should celebrate the role of, the, of local government and uh, uh, certainly the, the leadership of the, of the council at that particular time. If I might also, I think one of the other very, very encouraging things about the agenda tonight, although we, I don't know if we'll get to discuss it, is the move towards trying to protect our office space in the borough. Because something which has worried me enormously over the course of the years, really since the, uh, uh, the I mean, we don't want to, uh, it's a shame to aspire to uh, ascribe uh, blame, but I think it was one of the less helpful uh, acts of the coalition government to introduce the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the change to the regulations which made it much easier under permitted development to lose office space. Uh, and I entirely and, and enthusiastically support the uh, actions being taken for that because I have uh, had a number of discussions with people. One gentleman in, in the uh, uh, one part of my ward who was at present uh, employing 50 or 60 people uh, in uh, one of the uh, areas of the borough who is in real danger of moving out because he can't find the space he needs to expand his extremely successful, high-paying professional business. So I think there's an awful lot here that the majority group ought to be very proud of. If I have comments, I think it is that I, I don't think the motion goes quite far enough and the thinking is going quite uh, far enough. I'm watching at the moment in my ward a housing development on the old St John Bosco site. Over 100 units, no affordable housing at all uh, on that, and the three-bedroom townhouses are going for about 1.75 million. The su suggestion is that quite a number of those are being bought by sources of capital outside this country. I've no evidence at all if they're being bought with, uh, with laundered uh, uh, money from international uh, crime and therefore I won't suggest they are. But at the moment there are issues that but, but these are issues, I think, which for us and for every other London borough uh, are uh, important. Um, I think the, the, the developments at Southlands and, White, and, and Whitelands, uh, the, the former teacher training colleges there, uh, an awful lot of the people there never really live in Wandsworth at all. They view this as a dormitory. They go up in the morning into town, they come back uh, in the evenings. I knew I was uncomfortable about Formula E in Battersea Park. It took me a while to work out why it, why it was. But I think it was that one of the really exciting things about Wandsworth is how we get the balance between the excitement of London and the green spaces pretty much right. And I think what was niggling at me, uh, although I'm not sure I could have articulated it straight away, was that uh, starting to view Battersea Park as another source of, of income rather loses that rather delicate balance that has made Wandsworth an exciting place to, uh, to live. And so there are certainly very, very uh, exciting uh, uh, things going on at the moment, and I, I uh, entirely uh, uh, join in the uh, majority group in, in taking uh, uh, or, or agree that, that they should take uh, considerable pride with that. I just wonder whether the children of those key workers that Councillor Mrs. Leonie Cooper talked about uh, who have you know, uh, the, the, the right to buy w was a great success in many ways but we do recognise that we do now have a lot of properties which have very very short term tenants moving through which have significantly damaged in my view the social cohesion of some of our great housing estates I don't have any very simple answers to these I think all I'm saying is that in the next stage of these wider discussions it would be very helpful I think for us to get together as a council and, uh, uh, and to uh, discuss those but I do say I think tonight's motion is a very good start and I commend the leadership for bringing it forward. Thank you. Councillor Belton. Oh, sorry, just hold on one second. Certainly. Councillor Ellis. Local Secretary. I was actually uh, in the loo and I gather that I got a, a mention in dispatches from uh, Councillor Leone Cooper, um, apparently on that uh, widely listened to radio station, Radio Wandsworth. Uh, I apparently suggested that uh, everybody should... Uh, should move to Barking and Dagenham. Well, I'm sure it's a very, very nice place. I think, I don't recall saying that, but I may well actually have suggested that perhaps Councillor Leonie Cooper should move to Barking and Dagenham. Uh, a sentiment which, with which I suspect there'll be much agreement on her side as well. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Councillor Belton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I first of all congratulate Councillor White on a great maiden speech? Um, not too much mention of, of the word tooting. Um, and can I also uh, 
Jen, I also uh, uh, congratulate Councillor Grimston, who as a crossbencher gets more and more interesting all the time. And uh, I think I agree with much of what he said. And what I agree with is uh, about much of the aspirations and the fact that I think it's just and reasonable for the majority party to congratulate themselves on what's been ha happening in Nine Elms. Um, when I said that in the supplementary question, Councillor Govindia had the grace to deny that I really felt it, very graceless of him, which is one of the problems I had with the motion. Uh, for instance, it mentions, and um, why shouldn't it, it mentions Boris Johnson, at least in passing. The fact, and here there's going to be dispute, the fact that London's revivification started clearly under Ken Livingstone doesn't get a mention. Of course, justice gets derided. The fact that the fact that Councillor Councillor ex Councillor Khan has been mayor for six months hardly gets a mention. There's questions all over the place saying why hasn't it? And yet almost everyone in the country would say, certainly in London, would say that his first six months have been spectacularly successful. Now if you're so out of touch, if you're so out of touch with the public on that, then, uh, then I think you have a, a slight problem. But as I tried to say, I mean I think, I think uh, the aspirations are okay and I'm not defending anyone else here, I'm just saying that if you're out of touch about that. Presumably the point about aspirations, as Councillor Cooper pointed out, is it's inclusive and persuasive, it's inclusive for all, as someone said I know recently, making nine elms work for us all. The slight problem with it is although we're very proud, Councillor Govindia is quite proud and again reasonably so of 25, having 25% affordable housing, that means by definition 75% are something else. Now if you look at uh, uh, a couple of minutes on, uh, on various property sites, I'm just picking the right move for instance, you'll see the marketing for much of uh, what's been sold in Nine Elms has been based in Tokyo, Beijing, Kuala Lumpur, New York and Los Angeles. Um, interesting for local people, aspirations, but that's where the marketing has been. At least a third have been sold abroad, nothing wrong with foreigners, until of course you get to the Tory party conference last week when it turns out to be there's plenty wrong with foreigners. I think there's a slight problem the majority party here has about whether they're welcoming or not welcoming foreigners. And does it occur to them just for a moment that actually the effect of last week um, and Brexit, and I'm not going either side of that still to be proved, but might just have a query on our many, many foreign workers in this power, because I think they ought to think about it for a moment. About the level of housing, we are very concerned about people earning more than the median household level. I suppose we're representative of them. I don't suppose there's many people who come from a household here of less than 26,000 a year, which is the average, or the median, sorry. We don't represent them. So we're very concerned indeed about affordability and top prices, millions in uh, Nine Elms. Meanwhile, we sell properties, right to buy, Lord is a success, and in some ways I guess it is, but 30% of those properties, as we know, are now in, under the control of private landlords, and quite a few millionaires have been made on the Doddington Estate and the Alton Estate out of high rents in those areas. What happens to, as Councillor Cooper quite rightly said, the cleaners, the plumbers, the caretakers, what's happening to them and do we care? And I'm not yet convinced that we care. Sometimes I wonder about the de democratic system actually, that, that, that it operates here. Perhaps we ought to select councillors by random ballot. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? If we had 60 councillors selected by a random ballot, whose medium household level would have been as low as 26,000 pounds, see what their attitudes would be about some of these developments. All I can say is, from where I sit, as a, a councillor for Latchmere and knowing people in Queenstown, the talk in Battersea consistently 
is that area is not for us. Um, there's no point in denying it. That is what people are concerned about. So let's keep on with the aspirations, but let's try and open it out a little bit more broadly to people on less income than the ones we're worried about. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Tracy. Do your best. <laughs> I, I would like yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Um, a very good, interesting, and refreshing debate. I also would particularly. I mean, I guess um, uh, part of my role in this debate is to talk about the aspirations that we have for our uh, families and children. And it's interesting that the Labour Party would constantly go on about the affluent in us, in uh, Wandsworth. And we all know we have a very large affluent um, uh, society, and I'd be surprised if the average wage in Wandsworth was the same as the national average wage. But I'm very proud of our aspirations in education. Um, Councillor Ambash was with me yesterday at a meeting where we heard that 100% of our um, private and voluntary uh, providers for early years education are now good and outstanding. And we all know, because we've quoted it often enough, that over 95% of our schools are um, either good or outstanding. It's very important to get these basics right for um, our youngsters so that they will be able to fulfill um, the uh, prospects that Nine Elms offers to them all. Um, I yesterday met an eight-year-old who just completely out of the blue, knowing my role on the council, asked me if I thought it would be possible that he, when he was a little bit older, could do his work experience at Apple. That's his aspiration, and I was absolutely delighted to assure him that we would do everything we could to make sure that was possible. Our youth unemployment rate is well below the uh, national average, and again this year has gone down to 3%. Um, which shows that we are beginning to provide the skills and the jobs and the education that's needed for our aspiring youngsters. And I have absolutely no doubt that with Councillor Caddy in control of the apprenticeship programme, that will go even further. And I couldn't agree with her more by saying that we needed to work very hard to make sure that um, our employers particularly and our parents who sometimes don't understand that uh, a proper working apprenticeship is every bit as credible and valuable as an education, a university education. There are some really um, interesting aspects that came out of this debate. Housing obviously uh, dominated but I have to say I am really proud to be a Wandsworth Council where more council houses have been delivered by this council than any other council in London. Yeah. I'm very proud that we haven't had to, um, like Southwark, move all their council tenants into um, the outskirts because the land that they were on is more valuable for them to sell than for the council tenants to inhabit. I don't think that there's anything those councils can teach us about um, housing, and I'm very proud of our regeneration program, which is um, putting new life and housing into our two sites in uh, York Road, uh, in the, on the Winstanley and at Roehampton. I think that they are inspirational. I think they will deliver for the people of Wandsworth. And I think that we, certainly on this side, can be very proud of them. Um, I would just finally like to add 
that the excite I can't explain to you the excitement that youngsters feel about Apple moving into Wandsworth. It is so exciting for that generation to have such a large organization moving in. As was stated by one of the speakers, at the moment we are dominated by the public sector, either the hospital or ourselves. And to have a bright, young, aspirational company that will bring with it all those um, young tech companies that will sit beside them is probably the most exciting thing that has happened uh, in Wandsworth since I've been a councillor. So I really do welcome them and wish them in Nine Elms every success. I must just say I totally reject their uh, the, uh, opposition's amendment. I think that they have been mealy-mouthed and I ask our side to support the original motion. Yeah. Uh, matter now before the Council is the amendment moved by Mi Councillor Mrs. Leonie Cooper and seconded by Councillor Belton on aspirations, agenda item 19. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. And those against the amendment? Any abstentions? So no. that's, uh, the amendment is defeated 16 for 31 against, two abstentions. 16 for 31 against? Yeah, two abstentions. It's defeated. Yeah. The uh, amendment is defeated 16 for 31 against and two abstentions.